think I got one. I think I got one. I got one. I see one. I got one, Mario. I got a big one. Is that one? Yeah. yeah that's okay. a good size one, dude. This is one to get. Okay, so the good news is we've got dragons, frilled dragons. This is actually the perfect environment for frilled lizards because, point your camera down, check this out. You see the grass? It's completely manicured. These lizards are arboreal. And they'll perch on the sides of the trees and look for their prey in the grass. The shorter the grass, the easier it is to spot the prey. So all of these trees that exist out in here are filled with dragons. But you'd be surprised how many lizard species actually intermingle with civilization. And a number of the dragon species specifically, so these frilled dragons, look at this park and they say to themselves, this is the perfect place to make our kingdom. All right, let's gear up, head down yeah. that direction, and get one. Nice. Okay, now what's really, really unique about these lizards is that they will just peer around the side of the tree with one eye, like this, right? And they will look for anything coming close, and then they will whoop, 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 scoot a little bit more to the side to keep themselves camouflaged. Their skin and their scales perfectly blends them into the trees, but still they're smart enough to know that if they move out of sight, a potential predator won't see them. All right, let's move up to the next tree. Okay, come over this way. You see that? I see yeah. it. Oh my gosh, this is the perfect dragon. I'm gonna get into position so that I'm going straight towards the tree on the back side of the trunk. Buddy. Oh, I'm getting clawed up. That is as high as Coyote Peterson can jump. Man, it started moving its way, whoa, buddy, up the tree. All I could see was its claws just hanging off the side. And I said to myself, man, if ever in your life you could jump high enough to dunk a basketball, this is that moment. And that right there is the one lizard that I hoped we would catch here in Australia. The one and only frilled dragon. Look at that face. Oh, pop up, there we go. Whoa, oh, there it is, the display. And it almost looks like two big eyes, right? And that basically says to any predator, imagine if you're a hawk swooping in, this guy turns around and goes <gasps> Just like that, you're gonna be thinking, that is not a meal for me. There are strips that run down the length of it that are made of cartilage. That's what allows them to puff it up. As soon as they feel threatened, look at that. Whoa, you better back off. I'm a big guy. They have these very distinctive fang-looking front incisors. Non-venomous, obviously, but those teeth will bite and hold on, and they are voracious predators. The reason these lizards are up in the trees is that they're a diurnal, predator. It means they're out hunting during the light of day and they have incredible eyesight. They can actually see small insects, arachnids, and other reptiles running around in the grass and they will come down from the trees and then make a feast out of them. Now, what's really unique about this lizard species specifically is that the hind limbs are a lot longer than the forelimbs and when they reach top speeds they'll actually lift up off of the ground and run bipedally across the environment. And you can see this lizard's almost capable of turning all the way around to bite me to make sure that that does not happen because once they bite, they do not let go. And when I look down that throat, whoa, look all the way down there. The inside of the mouth is also brightly colored. That's aposomatic coloration, but in this instance, it's not a venomous creature. It's just a warning that I'm not something you want to mess with. Ooh, ooh, and they'll also do that. They will whip you in the face with the tail. I just took that one to the eyeball. Yeah, no, I'm okay. Wow, that stings. You can see how sharp those claws are, Whoa. ripping yes. my wrists open. You're bleeding pretty good. Oh, man. Uh, can we get we're first aid? No, 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 we're good, we're good, we're good. No, Dude, that, that's bleeding. 
Yeah, well, that's what happens when you grab onto a dragon. This is a formidable little predator. Holy mackerel, I just have to catch myself for a second. Now, you see those teeth, you see this attitude, it's all display. This lizard is never going to attack you. And the only reason he's in this defensive pose right now is because obviously we've come into the environment and I've caught him. When I was a kid, one of my friends bought me a toy frilled lizard and I adored this little rubber lizard. I mean, it went everywhere with me and I said to myself, one day, if I ever make it to Australia and have the chance to catch one of these lizards, I will be so incredibly thankful. And it was a challenge. As you guys could see, they're very smart, very perceptive when it comes to their environment. Now, one of my favorite things about these lizards is that they look just like the Dilophosaurus from Jurassic Park. Now, in real life, that dinosaur did not likely have frills. This lizard is what gave the filmmakers the inspiration for such an intimidating design. Can you imagine what it would be like if this lizard was actually capable of spitting venom? I wouldn't be getting it this close to my face. So cool. I have waited my entire life to get up close with this lizard. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. All right, back up into your tree you go. There he goes. <laughs>